Since 2010, we have known that Europeans have 2-4% to Neanderthal DNA admixture, with some archaic Europeans and even some modern Euro outliers having higher percentages. Paper published 2010, a draft sequence of the Neanderthal genome. Co-authors Fante Pebo, Johannes Krauss, and Matthias Meyer. With the discovery of the tiny pinky bone at Denisova Cave in Russia in 2008, we also know that East Eurasians have Altai Neander Denisovan admixture as much as 5%. We now know that Melanesians and Pacific Islanders have up to 8% Southern Denisovan DNA. Melanesians, including Papuans, have admixture from a separate branch of Denisovans. Australian Aborigines have admixture from an as of yet to be determined third branch. And the Africans? Dervisula and Sankararaman, 2020. In 2020, two UCLA geneticists released their groundbreaking paper on African admixture with archaic hominids. The paper by Sriram Sankararaman and Arun Dervasula was published at science.org, recovering signals of ghost archaic introgression in African populations. Abstract, the contribution of archaic hominids to the genetic variation of present-day Africans or archaic introgression. Our analysis indicates that these populations derive 2 to 19 percent of their genetic ancestry. Continuing, genetic ancestry from an archaic population that diverged before the split of Neanderthals and modern humans. The date for Homo sapien Neanderthal divergence is often cited as 500,000 years ago, but others including Chris Stringer say it could have been as far back as one million years ago. Putative dates for Homo erectus are 2.4 million years ago to 100,000 years ago. However, there have been some suggestions that Homo erectus could have survived till a much later date. BBC, Homo erectus survived longer than we thought, 2019. In the 1990s, one team in Java came up with an unexpectedly young age of 27,000 years ago. Continuing, this raised the distinct possibility that modern humans overlapped with Homo erectus. Iwo Eluru Man In their paper, Sankararaman and Dervasula do suggest one possible example of African admixture the specimen from Cameroon, Homo Iwo eloriensis. Discussion. Fossils with a combination of archaic and modern features can be found across Sub-Saharan Africa and the Middle East until as recently as 35,000 years ago. Examples of these fossils include a cranium from Iwo Eluru and human remains from Ishango. Sankararaman confirmed this view to Israeli archaeologist Ruth Schuster in a 2020 interview, quote, It's similar to the 35,000 years ago in Sub-Saharan Africa at Iwo Eluru, Nigeria, and Ishango in the Democratic Republic of Congo, end quote. Additionally, in a lengthy 2020 lecture, Sankararaman further speculated on who the ghost species might be. He mentioned Lyotoli, hominid, 18 LH18 from Tanzania at 128,000 years ago 
discovered by Mead Leakey's team in 1976. Note aside, that portion of Sankarayaman's speech where he talks of LH-18 has been scrubbed from the video. Beyond speculating on Iwo Eluru and LH-18, the UCLA duo has offered no further statements as to the identity of the mysterious ghost species admixed with West Africans. African Erectus, Homo ergaster. Ever since Eugene Dubois discovered the first Homo erectus fossils in Java, 1891, paleoanthropologists have been fiercely arguing what defines the species and which fossils should be designated as Homo erectus. Colin Groves, a noted primatologist from the Australian National University and the designated father of cryptozoology, attempted to solve the problem in 1975. Groves, along with Czech biologist Vlatislav Mazik, conducted intense and extensive examinations of cranium, teeth, and mandibles from Homo erectus. They separated African erectus, giving it a new name, Homo ergaster. Richard Leakey was furious. Co-discoverer of various Homo erectus fossils in Africa, including the famed Turkana boy, Leakey wanted Homo erectus to be at the base of genus Homo. Groves would later describe how Leakey got especially nasty, writing him harshly worded letters and snubbing him at conferences. Despite the Leakey family's strong objections to Homo ergaster as a separate species, ergaster was eventually accepted in the paleoanthropology community. Australian Museum. Homo ergaster lived between 1.5 and 1.9 million years ago, although some classifications include additional individuals that extends their range to between 700,000 to 2 million years ago. Continuing, some unique features about the jaw that made it different from our other human ancestors. These same features were initially thought to be early forms of Homo erectus from Africa, all these fossils have now been reclassified as Homo ergaster. The 1.5 million year old Turkana boy discovered by Leakey's team in Kenya in 1984 has since been reclassified to Homo ergaster. Skeletal, morphology, and cranium shape have shown the specimen to be more primitive than originally believed. Professor Karen Babb was recently interviewed on Evolution Soup. She outlined how reanalysis of Turkana boy showed skeletal features, especially the ribcage and pelvis area, were more primitive. The Evolution Soup host chimed in, quote, like Lucy, end quote. There has long been extreme controversy and even scandal in paleoanthropology over the original reconstruction of the Turkana boy skeleton. Skull size and shape variation. From Knowledge Project, Nature.com, the smallest bodied early Homo erectus fossils have been brain sizes only slightly larger than earlier hominids like the Australopithecines. Average brain size for the Australopithecines, such as Australopithecus afarensis lucy was 380 cc to 555 cc in comparison the average chimpanzee brain capacity is 380 cc paper 2016 leakey and alan walker argued that despite significant differences in both geological age and geographic space between african and asian fossils the Kubifora specimens showed the morphological cranial bow plan established by Homo erectus in Asia. Definition Bow plan, a German word used in biology to describe a common body plan or morphology. 
Continuing, they describe KNM ER 3733 as like that of Homo erectus from Peking. In contrast, other studies suggested that shape and cranial structures showed that African Homo erectus was not so clearly affiliated with Asian Homo erectus. Continuing, in these instances, African Homo erectus was often recognized as Homo ergaster. New find in the Afar. A fossil cranium was discovered in 2018 in Ethiopia by a young goat herder on a camel. He showed it to the archaeology team led by Salashi Simon. Paper, Wiley Online 2023. Emiliano Brunner et al. Endocast from Dana Aul North, a 1.5 million year old human brain case from Afar, Ethiopia. The nearly complete cranium Dan 5 P1 was found dated to 1.5 to 1.6 million years ago, assigned to Homo erectus. Continuing, its size is particularly small for known range of variation of this taxon. The cranial capacity has been estimated at 598 cc. Continuing, based on our set of endocranial measures, the general endocranial proportions are within the range of fossils included in the species Homo habilis or in the genus Australopithecus. Bruner outlines at phys.org 2023. Dan 5 P1 cranial morphology indicates that it belongs to the earliest African stage of Homo erectus, identified using the name Homo ergaster. Homo ergaster, direct lineage to modern Africans? From the Smithsonian, Fernando Viania is a population geneticist and professor of anthropology at the University of Colorado Boulder who researches how Neanderthal and Denisovan ancestry impacts the life and health of modern people. On January 19, 2024, Professor Viania was the guest on the Smithsonian's Hot Topics here at YouTube, hosted by Dr. Brianna Povener. Topic, Archaic Introgression in Modern Humans. Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, Denisovans, quote, at this point, these groups are evolving independently. We are accumulating a lot of our unique genetic variants, unique to these three groups, end quote. Quote, now, there might be some other groups that we don't quite know of yet, but we may see some evidence in our genomes right. So, maybe Homo ergaster in Africa." End quote. Professor Viennia's remarks acknowledging Homo ergaster as ancestral to modern Africans could be a sign that the geographic continuity model is gaining acceptance even in academia over out of Africa. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.